Ba -da -da. Ty, we're live. Ty, we're What's live. What's going on, Dan? Anything? Anything newsworthy? Yeah, this is our 2024 Arkansas preview. Um, a lot of things to work on. Uh, okay, we have a four. We have the four. We have the four. Um, here is what's going to happen. We're yeah. going to let some people file in. We are going to count it in the way we do all of our live streams. And then we're going to do the thing, man. We got a lot to discuss yes, here. Yes, we do. Uh, please keep the comments coming. Subscribe to the channel so that you can participate in the chat. We're going to have some polls going. We're going to put up some comments. Um, we're going to make this as, as uh, interactive as we can. I know there are a lot of folks out there who have much to say about this very issue. So um, without further ado, Dan, if you are ready, I am ready. Let's talk. Let's count this in. Let's go from three. Let's go from two. The college football playoffs are set. A short while ago, the playoff committee announced that Michigan, Washington, Texas, and Alabama. Alabama were its top four. Florida State Conference champion undefeated. Left out. Georgia, one loss SEC runner-up. Two-time defending champion. Left out. They finished sixth in the college football playoff rankings, Dan Rubenstein. A lot to break down on this front. Sort of unprecedented, definitely unprecedented that Florida State at 13-0 and a major conference champion left out of the mix. It is obviously one way that the college football playoff is going to go out with a bang here in this four-team format. Of course, next season we go up to 12, but a lot to react to. It's not un surprising i guess or not no. surprising i guess given what we discussed last night in the wake of the florida state win and how they looked 16 to 6 over louisville but um nonetheless it still kind of feels dirty it feels, it dirty feels weird florida and state off. out yeah yep no it does and it it made me look i'm not a florida state fan I, i'm not an alabama fan i don't really care by the way heavy sark fluence with Alabama, Sark's former school. Texas, Sark's current school. Washington, Sark's former school. Big Sark fluence in the uh, in the in the playoff. Um, it feels a little dirty because I I wanted Boo Corrigan, Boom Shakalaka Corrigan, to come into that ESPN interview and say, "Here are the factors we looked at. Here are the metrics we looked at." And it was just sort of like you listen to him talk and you come to the conclusion that he wanted to. He just wanted to. The committee just he wanted to. They wanted to put Alabama in because they felt like, well, what's a playoff without Alabama, right? Like you can't have a dinner party without appetizers. You know, you can't go to the park without a picnic blanket. It just felt like you got to include Bama here. And their case against Florida State, I don't know. It, it feels very flimsy. And... It's easy to talk about that you don't think Florida State is one of the best four teams without Jordan Travis, and that's fine. What more could they have done? What more could they have controlled within their power? Uh, Alabama could have handled things better over the course of the season. Florida State could have handled things over the course of the season better. But it just felt like they were giving Alabama a benefit of the doubt that felt somewhat unearned, that Florida State couldn't have possibly earned unless... They beat Louisville, like the, a top 20 team, a top 15 team, whatever, by 50. Like what they were asking of Florida State was not on the same level of what they asked of Bama, which is very odd to me. I don't know. What do you think? Well, look, I mean, I think a couple things. Yeah. I think the biggest reason why Florida State was left out is because the system is and always has been stupid. Yes. The four team playoff, it was a huge milestone to get to it. Sayonara. Get rid of it. Sooner, if possible, I always hated it. It never made sense, given that you had five power conferences. Yeah, It certainly played into what we love on some level about college football and that it promoted debate and argument and, and passionate, fiery streams, perhaps like this one. But it was always dumb. And in its final breath, Florida State, unfortunately, got to feel the wrath of that in a way that almost no other team had. This is, again, unprecedented. So it sucks for them. It doubly sucks. Not only do they lose Jordan Travis, but now they miss out on a playoff berth despite winning all of their games. So that is my first thought. My second thought, I thought, second thought, I thought. Yeah, my second good. thought was, I think, summarized best by Willie B, who tweeted our solid verbal Twitter account. And he said that Florida State getting in is both the right and wrong choice. Agree. 
right? Because an undefeated major conference champion absolutely deserves to earn a spot. Wrong because there's the possibility they lose by 10 or more against seven teams that are in the hunt here. But that's a guess. That's not a reason, right? Like, you can tell me that, like, Florida State, if they were to play Michigan, say, Florida State with an excellent defense could fully prevent Michigan from establishing or leading one touchdown drive like a top defense did literally last night with no quarterback. Now, they lost 26 nothing, but let's not pretend that an excellent defense with even an okay offense isn't a worthwhile addition to a playoff. I think they're scared of the blowouts. They're scared of having some sort of national championship that nobody's going to watch because it features quote unquote lesser brands or something like that. If you were to get like a Florida state Washington national championship, that's terrifying for all of the wrong reasons. And so that I'm not saying that's the exclusive reason why we have this top four, but it's, it's feels like such a strange commentary on how the committee thinks. And also Reese Davis called Jim Grobe, a great coach. Um, (laughs) And that was like as a defense of how we arrived at this point, yeah. right? That it was like, we've got all these football minds and football coaches in the room. Jim Grobe, of course, the great coach from Wake Forest who didn't even finish as a 500 coach. So we have to we have to be careful with our language, with our verbiage, I think. Yeah, I mean, and then the other point that I would, that I would raise here kind of in response to your question is actually just yeah. a comment that that came in. Yeah. And, you know, this kind of, I think adds a little bit more meat to what I've been saying all along. And it's from field rituals as we do this live on YouTube. Anyone who ever complained about expanding to 12 teams, making the regular season irrelevant. Yeah. It's now sort of been proven that the regular season was irrelevant, at least in the four team playoff. Yeah. As we've come to know it for Florida state. So this is a huge bummer for them. I mean, you, you look at the stats, you look at the resumes, Florida state, 13-0 13-0 and conference champion. The strength of schedule was lower than some of the teams that were also part of this conversation. Nothing they can control. Nothing, Nothing they, they can, can control. control. Right. Nothing they can control. Best win was over LSU back in week one. Also, of course, beat Louisville without Jordan Travis, without Tate Rodemaker, beat Clemson. That was a great game back in week four. Also beat Miami. You compare that heads up against Alabama, who got the nod over Florida State. Of course, had the one loss earlier in the year to Texas, but... Strength of schedule, 50 spots higher. Wins over Georgia, most notably, of course, over LSU, the common opponent, as well as Ole Miss. Uh, On this topic, Texas got a pretty big nod over Alabama. When we did our midnight stream, we were trying to debate where Texas would fall in all of this. Texas, of course, beat Alabama but lost to Oklahoma. How does the committee parse that out? 12-1, and obviously Big 12 champion, 13th in terms of strength of schedule outside of the Bama win, which we all have talked about ad nauseum at this point through, I guess, two weeks of the college football season. They knocked off that version of Alabama. Yeah. Wins over K-State, Iowa State, of course, lost to Oklahoma in the Red River game. So they get the three spot. That's going to be a great game between Washington and Texas. That means that the other matchup. We had to go all the way back to 2022 to see that in the bowl era. Yeah. And that means that our next matchup in the college football playoff rankings, uh, our next matchup as as uh, as evidenced by the college football playoff rankings is going to be Michigan against Alabama, which will also be a pretty good game. I hope so. I really do. I really hope that we have good games because we, we can't change the four at this point. So we got to hope for the best uh, now that we have these four. It's just... It's sort of a tough pill to swallow the more I've sat on it. We reacted to this last night, the possibility that this could happen. And, you know, I, I sort of sat on the fence saying, well, what else is Florida State supposed to do, right? You beat a top 15 by double digits. It's a third string quarterback who will not be starting in a potential playoff game. But at the same time, you know, this was, I think Joey Galloway talked about this, that it's not written into the bylaws of the playoff that an undefeated power conference team automatically gets in, right? It's There is some subjectivity to this, which certainly goes back to some of the conversations we had at the start of the playoff era where it's just like, who is this committee? What are the exact metrics? No, they don't. It changes week to week. No, we don't know. Uh, do any of them have biases? Yes, no. As we watch Reese Davis, Alabama, and Greg McElroy, Alabama on the ESPN <laughs> set, be like, no, this Alabama is definitely a top four team, guys. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's just, I notice everything, Ty. Come on. Uh, it's, it's a weird time because... 
how, how if you're a Florida State fan, player, coach, administrator, whatever, how do you come away with this system and, you know, your your uh, membership in the ACC if if, if that's going to be held against you, right, that there weren't enough power teams, anything in the ACC, not enough football serious teams that give you football serious wins? Like, h- how do you, like, go into winter conditioning, right? How do you go into this and be like, well, you know, we beat – Mizzou or whoever in a bowl game, let's just hang a national title banner. Like, is that the new thing that to do? Yeah. I mean, following in the footsteps of one of their, uh, one of their fellow Florida universities that could go the UCF route. Yeah. Win a bowl game and claim a national championship. To Especially point, if a one loss team wins the college football playoff national championship. Yeah. To, to your point about how does Florida state feel? There's been a statement released from athletics director, Michael Alford. Yeah. at Florida State. Quote, this is a doozy. <laughs> yeah. The consequences of giving in to a narrative of the moment are destructive, far-reaching and permanent, not just for Florida State, but for college football as a whole. The argument of whether a team is, quote, most deserving or best is a false equivalence. It renders the season up to yesterday irrelevant and significantly damages the legitimacy of the college football playoff. The 2023 Florida State Seminoles are the epitome of a total team to eliminate them from a chance to compete for a title is unwarranted injustice that wow. shows complete disregard and disrespect for their performance and accomplishments. It is unforgivable. This is a loaded statement. I won't read the whole thing. I understand where he's coming from. <laughs> Obviously, I understand yeah. where he's coming from. Um, look, we both picked this as the four last night. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say that we agree with keeping Florida State out. It is to say it is what we thought they would do, and they did it. Man, there are so many weird tentacles to this playoff that like are just buzzing into my very dumb brain right now. Um, Washington becomes the most likable team, right? Nobody, nobody really knows too much about Washington nationally. They're a great team, obviously, but Michigan has the sign-stealing allegations. Nobody feels, besides Bama fans, <laughs> that Bama should be in. Uh, Texas, generally speaking, has been kind of a villain in this sport, right? All the money, but can't actually win. Now they've actually won. So you have Washington as the most likable team in this. And then I can't remember a single playoff, and maybe it's true every single year, but like you think about the tiny little events that could have completely thrown a wrench or changed everything about how we thought about these teams, right? You, You start with the Alabama finish against Auburn. You, you look at the collapse of both North Carolina and Clemson within the ACC and that like if one of those teams had just like kind of gotten its act together, we wouldn't be ha- – they probably would have beaten a Florida State without Jordan Travis. I'm going to go back to Oregon moments against Washington, those high leverage moments in that first game that Oregon had this opportunity to be here. Uh, and Texas with close calls, of course, losing to Oklahoma and then close calls against TCU and Houston. Like we, we talked about this on the show last night. There's nobody undeniable in this playoff. And so it's it's sort of wild to think about how everybody sort of tightrope their way into this top four. But the Alabama thing still sort of stings when you think about like the exact reason they're in is what exactly? That previous SEC teams in previous years were super impressive. We know about the talent on Alabama's roster, but at a certain point, you need to separate yourself well, from teams I, you're clearly more talented than. Look, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Do you think Florida State beats Alabama? Do you think this version of Florida State but I th- who cares? Travis beats Alabama? Who cares? I care. I'm asking. Why? Do you think that Florida State is better than Alabama if they play in a neutral Well, nobody field thought tomorrow? Michigan State was better than Alabama, but nobody denied Michigan State going, uh, I think they went undefeated that year, did they not? And getting well, into the playoff, winning the Big Ten. I mean, I just they feel lost like... lost 41-0, something like that. I feel like if you put Florida State up against... Alabama, if you put Florida State up against this version of Florida State up against any of these teams that are part of this conversation, they lose. And so that's where I, mean, I that's where I really struggle with this because there has always been this tension between most deserving and best. Yeah. And there's no good way to quantify that. We can throw numbers at it. We don't really know. But in watching that Florida State team last night, it's clear that the defense is elite. The defense is absolutely playoff caliber. Yeah. Do they beat Alabama? Do they beat Texas, a Texas team that, you know, destroyed Oklahoma State, clearly can play offense? So you're telling me you have to know. you have to summit the the peak 
you have to clear the enormous bar that is Peyton Thorne at quarterback. That's what you're telling me. That any team that was like, well, Tate Rodemaker, sir, I've seen Peyton Thorne, and you, sir, are no Peyton Thorne. Like, that's the bar. It doesn't seem crazy high, Ty. It no. doesn't seem crazy high to clear. I, so it, it does not surprise me that they would not want to leave the SEC champion out of it. All due respect I'll, to Peyton Thorne and the Thorne family. All due <laughs> respect to Peyton Thorne. I, you know, what Alabama did in the Texas game to me is obviously notable, but that was way back when. And if we're going to account for the fact that the season is a living, breathing organism in which teams Definitely. can improve and things change from start to finish – then the the argument that we applied for leaving Florida State out because of their quarterback being injured yeah. um, should be applied in reverse to Alabama, which I think got better throughout the course of the year. Jalen Milrow got better. There's a reason that they won Agreed. that game. You could argue that it was Jalen Milrow doing his thing against Georgia. That's why they won 27-24. So I feel like Alabama improved over the course of the season. I feel like they absolutely deserve to be there. Um, it is a very, very odd construction. I'll grant you that, given the fact that they had the loss to Texas, the team that's in front of them now. Um, but I keep getting hung up on the fact that Florida State, in my opinion, doesn't beat any of the teams that are part of this conversation. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go back to, like, how much did Alabama actually improve? They improved to the point where they could game it up. They, they were gamers against Georgia, and they scored 20 points in a miracle against Auburn. 20 points in a miracle against a team that just got shelled by New Mexico State. So the games matter, Ty. That's all I'm saying. The games matter. And I it, it was kind of disappointing when, I think it was last week, Boo Corrigan talked about, like, well, a win is a win no matter when it happens. So that sort of goes against that logic that I think we both hold, that, you know, seasons are living and breathing and blah, 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 that, like, Texas did beat Alabama in week two. I don't know if Texas could beat Alabama now because they have improved. I think you're right. I just don't know to what point Alabama's improved. Like, they had opportunities to start separating themselves consistently. Like, they didn't separate from A&M or Arkansas. And they beat Georgia in quite impressive fashion. But that also calls into question, like, what Georgia actually was this year, which I thought was very good, but not the greatness that we've seen these past couple seasons. So, I, I just, I don't know what you do if you're Florida State. Like, yeah. if Florida State beats Louisville, and again, this is living in a reality in which we don't live, but if Florida State beats Louisville 13-10 to 10 with Jordan Travis, are we holding it against them in the same way? Like, everybody's Probably allowed not. to play down with their starting quarterback. Like, if Mich if J.J. McCarthy breaks his leg in the fourth quarter last night, our friend Kevin texted me this, what do you do with Michigan? Like, there, there's no consistency. And that's why, I mean, it comes down to subjectivity. Uh, I don't know, man. I it just feels off. It just feels off that we're giving Alabama a, a benefit of the doubt of Mac Jones and Bryce Young and Tua and not sort of looking at the Petri dish that actually is this Alabama season. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who do you favor in Alabama against Michigan? How do you feel about that game? How do you feel about the Washington-Texas match? That's in the Rose Bowl, right? They're playing in Pasadena? Yeah. Uh, Alabama-Michigan right now? With the amount of time that these teams are going to have to prepare, I I mean, how do you not side with the coaching edge in Nick Saban? Jim Harbaugh missed half of this season. Um, the playmaking edge, Jalen Milrow over J.J. McCarthy. Again, J.J. McCarthy led this team to zero touchdown drives last night. Doesn't mean he's a bad quarterback. I think he's a good quarterback. But I think the Michigan offense is a little bit flawed against a good defense, as we've seen. So I give the edge to Alabama, but I don't think that is – a means of defending their place in this playoff. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I think I also lean Bama. Yeah. In that matchup, the Washington Texas game has potential to be one of the better ones we've seen all season. And Alamobo. Redux. Yeah. I'm I'm very very curious to see how this Washington offense fares against a very very good Texas defense that has you know, despite the fact that the offense is solid, despite the fact that the offense had Quinn Ewers throwing for 450 yards against Oklahoma State last night, we know the offense is good, but the Texas has quietly been driving the bus. And how this version of the Washington offense, led by Michael Penix, he'll get some rest. Hopefully he feels better. I know he's been nicked up. This is Sugar Bowl? That's where they're playing? I I don't know the bowl games yet. No, no. I'm saying where what, where is... Uh... Michigan playing Washington. I don't know. Or excuse me, Washington playing. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. think it's the Sugar Bowl. 
wherever they're playing. Yeah. Um, this Washington versus uh, Texas game to me is supremely interesting. It is the Sugar Bowl. I just double checked. Indoors, Michael Penix way better in a controlled environment this year, warmth and indoors than he is in like the Corvallis rain in the yeah. Seattle cold. So, who do you favor in that? I feel like I've been selling Washington short okay. a lot down the stretch because they're playing in close games. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm probably inclined to lean Washington to keep the pixie dust going. Okay. Uh, the case for Washington right now is the connection between Michael Penix and his receivers as good as Texas looked against Oklahoma State, the clear worst team in these power five championship games um, that his connection, that connection has a higher ceiling than Quinn Ewers and whoever JT Sanders, AD Mitchell, Xavier worthy, who's beat up. And I don't know the status of his, I think left ankle. Um, I think that's not unreasonable. And Washington's defense, especially gets stronger over the course of the game. Alabama has more talent. I think Alabama's offensive line is better. I, excuse me. I think Texas's offensive line is better. I think the the overall talent on defense for Texas is better, but Washington didn't lose. Washington is a more clearly established group of winners than Texas. Yeah. So I I don't know. I I think I lean if I'm leaning quarterback and defense combination, I'm still probably giving the edge to Texas, but both of these teams struggled at times the back half of the year. Care to venture a guess at point spreads? Um, Alabama minus two and a half in the rows. Okay. And what's your other? My Washington, Texas yeah. point spread. Uh, Texas minus similarly two and a half. The early line has broken from our friends over at DraftKings. Michigan favored by two over Alabama. Okay. Texas favored by four and a half over Washington. Yeah. Texas fair by you said four and a half? Four and a half. Okay. I I I think that's about right. I mean, well, you said Michigan favored. Michigan favored by two over Alabama. Oh, Texas man. favored by four and a half over Washington. Yeah, I wouldn't I, I would not. I would grab those points as early and as often as possible <laughs> right now, those Alabama points in the Rose Bowl with that amount of time. Yeah. Uh let's, man. Let's let's take some comments here while we've got Please. folks on yeah. the stream. Um, G. Kelly, this team without Jordan Travis doesn't go 13 and 0. That's obvious. Okay, that's not a reality in which we live. Next, we've got if you are a Florida State fan, or if you're Florida State, you win your bowl, you absolutely hang a national title banner. Of course, right? of course, I think you kind of have to. Uh, Andre Clueless, thank you, Andre. Welcome, welcome to the stream. I don't know if it's about us or if it's about the committee, it'd be great. Eric made of tin. A regular here on the stream as a gambler don't <laughs> anyone can win and isn't that what we really want with florida state in you wouldn't have that God, i'm not so sure that? i'm not so sure a quarterback's the most important position it's still not the only position if i'm not mistaken iowa just won 10 games without a quarterback <laughs> that's a lot of games without a quarterback patrick if you win then you win I don't care who is or isn't injured. Yeah. I agree. If Jordan Travis is so pivotal in the decision to have Florida State in or not in the playoffs, shouldn't he be the Heisman Trophy winner? He's the Robert MVP. Trick? I don't know if that's what we are, we're considering the Heisman, but he's certainly the MVP. Yeah. I mean, look, King Zard. I love the name King Zard. I don't know what that stands for, but it sounds good. Is there Florida, a Queen Zard? Yeah. Florida State would have zero chance against any top 10 team right now. I don't know about zero chance, Kingsard. I mean, they just beat a top fifteen team. The honorable on a neutral Kingsard. Side, yeah, but I I think this is kind of he's being a little harsher than I would be. Yeah. But I feel like that's kind of where my thinking is at at the moment. I just I I don't see them beating any of the teams that we've got in this conversation. No, it's Tate Rodemaker, not Brock Glenn. Sure. I I certainly think it's more challenging with Tate Rodemaker. But I don't know. I And I, I want Winter Wonders. I was sort of less impressed with Keon Coleman over the way the, the season progressed. And they weren't – I don't think they fulfilled the hype necessarily of where they were 
after that LSU game, but they won a ton of games and you give them enough time to prepare, right? You're also not talking about them playing with Tate Rodemaker in five days. Yeah. You're saying you're giving them enough time to prepare, get healthy. And it's also Tate Rodemaker taking a full month's worth of first team reps in practice. I'm just not writing them off that easily. Who else is in the top 10 right now? I mean, it'll Otherwise, be like Oregon, Mizzou. Right, right. Yeah. Penn State. I don't know. I've seen some pretty down Penn State quarterback moments this year. This, this is an interesting comment from Stewart. And, you know, we haven't talked a whole lot about Georgia. I could flash up Georgia's resume. Yeah. Um, you know, it was going to be an uphill fight for Georgia to get into this thing because they lost last night because the schedule has not been anything that knocks you over. But by and large, Georgia has been pretty much a machine this season up until that game yesterday. And uh, I did see some online discourse, let's say, raging deep into the night last night as we were up doing our thing about folks trying to make the case for Georgia. Certainly Greg Sankey would make the case for Georgia as well. Uh, but Stewart points out here, he says, Georgia against X. Who are you betting on against Georgia to win a game you put money on? Maybe Michigan, but who else? How many games does Alabama win if they played 10 against Georgia? This is very much a similar comment to, I think, your logic about Oregon against Washington, right? Yeah. It's, it's that sense of, yeah, we know the result, but we still kind of think the other team's better. And Are you this my last night, Oregon, or the Oregon the previewing? Oregon, Oregon preview. Yeah, yeah. why well, I thought Oregon, Pac-12 despite losing game. the first time, yeah, it was better. Yeah. So I understand that logic. Yeah. Um, it's dangerous. It's a slippery slope to go there. But I do kind of feel similarly. We're going to get Georgia against Florida State in the Orange Bowl in all likelihood. Yeah. And um, – I think Georgia's probably heavily favored given the circumstances. Would not surprise me if they end up winning that game pretty handily. Georgia just lost the wrong game. And the the thing is, if you sit here and say, like, who would who would you bet with to beat Georgia at this point, I think is beside the point, right? If Georgia beats Alabama, they're obviously in. That's not the reality in which we live. If Georgia loses to Ole Miss and then beats Alabama, there's a really good chance they're in. They just lost the wrong game. Last night, yesterday, was just the wrong game to lose for Georgia. So if Georgia was truly, undeniably excellent, would have won that game. I think it's beside the point to say, and it it's a smart point to make if you're a Georgia fan. You got to win the games. You got to win the games. And if you want the SEC money, if you want the SEC spotlight, you got to win the biggest SEC game. How about that? Stratilatorian, did style points make the case for Texas over Florida State? I had no, the same I, thought I think, cross I think my having mind a, today. a much better win over Alabama on the road, um, and it being easier to include Texas as a top four team. I don't think their excellence is undeniable, but certainly not playing down to a team yesterday could not have hurt. Couldn't have hurt. Yeah. From Davis, if we're actually talking about the four best teams, why is Ohio State not mentioned? They only lost to Michigan. Right. Well, they didn't play the thirteenth game. I think fairly or unfairly, they're compared against recent Ohio State teams and that they're not as good. They lose a respectable game on the road to Michigan. But I don't think we have, like, you look outside of, it's a Penn State win and a Notre Dame win that I don't think have aged crazy well with the way Penn State played against Michigan and the way Notre Dame finished out the year. So I think Ohio State, like, if you want to have a conversation about the best one-loss teams in America... Sure, but you don't win your conference and you have an undefeated ACC team. I just, I think you're just going to take a back seat. Let's go to the Northeast Ohio Boise State fan. It's a mouthful, yep. but it speaks to, I think, some of the common sentiment out there in the college football fandom. Yeah. If anybody wanted proof that ESPN fixes college football, we got it. The playoff is basically the SEC versus the Big Ten with the personal vendetta ESPN has against the Big Ten. Yeah. The title game will be SEC versus future SEC. Um, tinfoil alert. <laughs> yeah. Tinfoil alert. Yep. I get where people are coming from with the sentiment. I don't know if I fully buy it here. Oh, man, another rerun. We got to watch Bama, Texas again. Another SEC rerun in the national championship. I don't know if I fully buy that ESPN bias. Doesn't the ESPN... 
grant of rights with the ACC run through like the year 3034, they have a vested interest in all things e- or ACC as well. Well, the top of the ACC desperately wants to leave. Yeah. Top of the ACC desperately wants to leave. And perhaps this will be another straw in that camel's back. We'll see. Michael Alford did not have nice things to say about where this playoff is going. So I, whether or not this uh, whether or not this sparks FSU to seek further outside capital or um, try and arrange some way out at tunnel under the grant of rights remains to be seen. But uh, this is a popular comment. Yeah, I mean, if they truly want to wear tinfoil, it should be Georgia in over Washington, right? If ESPN truly wanted to pull the that's pull right. the strings and puppeteer this thing, uh, that's where we would be. But I don't think that's the case. The lion chiming in. Is that Jerry Jones? It looks like it might be Jerry Jones. Could be, yeah. In the avatar. Florida State should not be in the college football playoff. I like the top four. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you for you. chiming in. <laughs> Thank oh, you for, for chiming in, yes. Thank you for chiming in. We've got yeah. all sorts of folks chiming in here, Dan. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe if you want to participate in the chat. We also have at the bottom in the ticker the link that you can use to find our podcast. We're going to have a whole host of content coming out over the next week or so. SolidRebel.com slash listen will kick you over to whatever app it is that you require to follow the podcast. Also, if you go down to the description of the stream, PlayWinterWonders.com is how you yes. get over to the bull pool. That should work. It didn't work last night, but it should work now playwinterwonders.com it's our free bowl confidence pool we obviously don't have the bowl matchups yet as they become available throughout the course of the day certainly by the time we drop our next podcast episode to the public feed on tuesday we'll know what all those matchups are and talk a little bit more about them um gonna be a busy week not just with bowl matchups obviously with this conversation but the portal opens on monday as well and they're gonna be guys switching teams big name guys switching teams which we'll do our best to try and cover here um we've got all sorts of comments coming in here i can keep doing this all day we'll do a few more might as well um the people coming up with these point spreads are either absolute clowns or genius minus four and a half for texas over washington is just comedic who really believes that texas would stand a chance against and then Oregon, it just cut off yeah so look here's the deal um i pulled up power rankings you know i have these composite rankings yep people disagree with point spreads all the time the composite set of rankings that I saw would have had Texas minus six mm-hmm. against Washington. And it actually would have had Michigan minus eight against Alabama. Now, take that with a grain of salt. You obviously need to adjust based on, you know, real world circumstances. That is not intended to be the end all be all. But just as another point of reference, um, it is not people coming up with point spreads subjectively because it makes them feel a certain way. It is always based on math and power rankings and points per drive and yards per drive and actual numbers. That is what the numbers say. The numbers that I have say that it should be higher. It may go higher. I would not bet on it if it got higher. That's just me. Four and a half points given the Washington offense. And I think their their ability to like never say die and especially be in a physical game like we saw right. on Friday night, I, I would not be comfortable laying that four and a half points. So I understand that frame of reference, but... The commentary that this is some, you know, some some shadow group of college football fans who are trying to stack things because they feel a certain way. That's, I think, the wrong narrative. Uh, what do we got here? Pac-12 overrated from Josh. What's their best out of conference win? Pac-12 overrated, Dan? No, I think absolutely Pac-12's not. A good conference. Terry Utah says, beat Baylor. Ty yeah. Baylor. You remember all the highs of Baylor? I'm just I do. Kidding, obviously, Terry says he's cheering for the cheaters. Okay. You know what? I appreciate the spirit of this comment. I appreciate it. Steer into the dark side, man. (laughs) Steer into it. Steer into it. You know, if Lincoln Riley had kept going with his steer into the dark side at USC, I'd argue they'd be in a better place. But he got soft. He got soft. He definitely would have hired a better defensive coordinator if he was really feeling the darkness. By the way, how about – here we go. How did Ohio Ohio State go from rank two to rank seven after a – uh, number three, Michigan. After a loss to number three, Michigan, uh, this happened with Bama and Georgia years back, and they just swapped spots. That makes no sense. I don't know. Different years, different teams, different I resumes, mean, different everything. Yeah. But but Michael's comment here does speak to a different point. Yeah. And it is something that I thought when I was getting ready for this. This I think final version of the playoff rankings almost completely completely invalidates all of the previous ranking shows that we've been forced to watch over Agreed. the last six weeks. Right. How does 
any how does like any of this movement? Texas is a great example. Texas was ranked seventh coming into this. One team in front of them lost. One team in front of them lost, and that was Georgia. And they they did not beat an impressive team. They didn't beat an impressive team. Right. Uh, they move up four spots based on, I mean, maybe style points. Well, it's essentially because why is Alabama in? You wanted to. Because the committee wanted to. So if you cannot put Alabama in without Texas, that's why they're there. Texas is not undeniable. From Kendall, how would the committee have viewed a team like the 2011 Alabama squad? Five kicks missed mm-hmm. and lost to a top two team. Oklahoma State blew a 24 to seven lead uh, to to a bad Iowa State team. I think Bama earned this spot. Thank you, Kendall, for the super chat. We appreciate that. Um, I don't have a problem with putting Bama in. I don't. This I year get... or in 2011? Well, I'm talking this year. Okay. I do think Bama earned the spot. I think they got better through the course of the season. I get that it's tricky. I, I don't like what happened to Florida State here. I come back to what I said at the very top when we started streaming in the first place. It was always a dumb system. It's a dumb system. People okay. try to tell me otherwise. Well, you know, this is this this is up for debate. It leaves it it it, it puts the bright minds of the college football ether in a room. They could talk it out like they talk it out for the sixty five team tournament, totally different. Totally different set of circumstances. I find it amazing, frankly, that we got this far into this thing before we had a situation like this. We haven't had a situation like this. For the most part, the die has been cast by the time we got to selection Sunday. We almost always knew what three of the four teams were going to be. I can't recall a situation where we had so much debate over the final two slots. And it just so happens that we got that in the dying breath of the four-team model. So I want it every year as a podcaster. <laughs> Well, yeah, I I mean, every as, year, as yeah. people that, that do content in this world, yeah, it, it of course, leads to a, a more vibrant discussion in December mm-hmm. than, than ever. But that, to me, is, I think, the, the, the final glancing blow of the four-team playoff that Florida State got basically thrown under the, under the bus of a system that was never really built in a thoughtful way. No. What do you think about this, Ty? From TB, people are disregarding the fact that Bama just defeated a two-time defending national champion with a 29-game win streak. That's what you call proving your case. That's what you call relying on previous season's results. I was going to say, how many tackles did N'Kobe Dean have yesterday? <laughs> Kenny McIntosh get loose? Stetson Bennett finding you know, a streaking Darnell Washington down the field? No? Nolan Smith? Number of sacks Nolan Smith had? Trevon Walker? I mean, what are we actually saying here? Like, Jordan Davis clog up everything? And Alabama found a way, despite Jordan Davis setting up a huge... No. There's no such thing as a two-time championship team. There's a two-time championship program, two-time championship head coach, but they did not beat a team with a win streak. They built a program with a win streak, but we're talking about all-American, NFL, all-pro type talents that are no longer there, and every team, every season is a living, breathing thing. So, no, you you can miss me with that, Ty. Drill, I love this. It's all based on vibes and nothing else. This year proves it. You want to do... Yeah, we're big vibes guys here. I mean, we we Love subscribe to the vibes mentality. Yeah, everybody loves a good vibe, right? So, no, yeah. it's play surge. It's surge Sunday. Yeah, you want to do it's you want it to have Alabama in a playoff. It's much easier just to say that than be like, well, they got better over the course of the season and what they did yet. No, no, no. You wanted to. That's okay. Just be honest. Faithful listener Dan says Dan Wetzel always says that the four team playoff was designed by people who didn't actually want to play off. That's also true. It's always been a dumb system, man. It just caught up with us ten years into it. We could have Michigan Washington in the Rose Bowl. We could have Bo Schembechler, Don James, Steve Entman. We could have had that tie. But people like you, you types went out and ruined it for everybody. Types like I put yeah. put this one up from Will. I don't think this is the former Alabama linebacker Will Anderson. Uh, I hope I think, it is. I hope it is. Yeah. I don't think it is. Um, I think the lawsuits will fly. I so listen. Will's been commenting. I get that there is some outrage here. Totally understand. I would like to see what that lawsuit looks like. I am not a lawyer. I don't claim to be one on the podcast nor on TV. I don't know what that lawsuit would look like. Right. <laughs> they all signed up for this. They all they it all rubber stamped collusion, this. Collusion, ESPN in bed with the SEC. They yeah, all rubber stamped this. They all did at some point. Yeah. So I don't know what I don't know what that actually looks Again, like. Again, 
the biggest crime here is putting <laughs> two Alabama guys on the set trying to defend this situation. And I think Reese Davis and Greg McElroy do a great job. But like you, you open the show with Greg McElroy saying, clearly Alabama is yeah. one of the best four teams in the country. Like mm, narrator. Yeah, I caught that. And there was there was also a tweet that was floating around out there uh, that I can pull up. Yeah. That basically spoke to, quote, watching Greg McElroy tell me a team can't overcome subpar quarterback play to win a national championship is comedic gold. Yeah. Not it's great. Wrong. It's wrong. he was efficient, if I remember correctly, but also needed uh, Colt McCoy's shoulder to explode. That helped. More people. I see lawsuits. There's not going to be any lawsuits, guys. Well, what are they going to sue? One. Yeah. What are they going to sue? Poor Bill Hancock. I'm going to take him for all of his Tostitos. <laughs> Andre says, when you expect an announcement, when do you expect an announcement from Florida State leaving the ACC? Look. <laughs> I mean, the ACC giveth and taketh, right? That we have current Miami, current Clemson, current North Carolina is how we ended up here with Florida State going undefeated. Now, they were fully in control. And look, if all of those teams had their acts together, if Pitt decided not to fall off a cliff, uh, all of, you know, I don't know, you know, Florida State uh, doesn't play all of those teams every year, but could have played a team that would have been good enough to beat Brock Glenn, Florida State, uh, rather than having Jack Plummer and uh, Jeff Brom in his first season at Louisville. Uh, maybe that would have made it easier, but here's where we are. This is this is what happens, and I don't think it's any easier if Florida State's joining a different conference. I think so, we may have an admissions office that has joined the conversation. Love at this. Least, at least I just am going to envision that. The entire point of the playoff is not who you think would win, but it's an award to the teams that finished undefeated or close uh, and let the chips fall where they may. That is one interpretation. Certainly one interpretation. Right. What else do we got here? Oh, man, we got we got some venom flying here in the chat, Dan. Yeah. Not unexpected, right? Not unexpected at all. I love it. What else do we got here? Uh, would you pick Florida State to compete with any of the teams in the top six? This has been my point. This is where I get hung up. I appreciate the sentiment. Well, uh, look, you have Houston taking Texas to the edge, right? Am I wrong? Houston got a yeah. shit spot at the end of that game and lost. Yeah. What did they finish? Four and eight, five and seven, fired their coach? Right. I just... Why do we have to actually pretend that like all of these teams are just perfectly excellent in the way that we've had some teams in previous years? Like, it's just it's not the situation. Like, you're telling me this Florida State defense couldn't make an absolute game against Washington, who has not who has played one good defense this year in Oregon, and they beat them. And certainly, Florida State doesn't have the offense without Jordan Travis that Oregon has. But you're telling me they couldn't do what ASU did, what Oregon yeah. State did? I'm not so sure. We saw what Lawrence Toafili and Trey Benson were able to do. There we go. Jethro. Liberty finished undefeated. Should they be in too? Oh, Liberty man. Look at this worst... guy. This A-plus logic. He's in outer space with this. <laughs> Got us. <laughs> Got us. Liberty had the worst schedule in Power 5. Yeah. Not Power 5. FBS. I always get those mixed up. Yeah. What else do we got here? Uh, tycoon's World. What's crazy to me is that everyone is shrugging off Washington. Failed to acknowledge the fact that they had the toughest schedule of all of these teams. I mean, they beat the Mountain West champion, did they not? <laughs> they beat the Mountain West champion. And for all the people, all the haters out there saying Alabama couldn't hang with USF, took them down as well. Took them down as well. A tough one. 10-3 deep into the fourth quarter, right? I'm not sure where the toughest schedule bit comes from. I see 11th strength of schedule for the Washington Huskies. Washington clearly deserves to be there. Their strength of resume, I think, was was highest. So it perhaps is a bit of uh They played both semantics. of their rivals at home, right? It's Oregon semantics. Played. It's the it's the strength of schedule versus strength of resume, which is what I'm drawing comparison to. Washington is deserving of being there. And I don't think we should shrug them off. I think we have shrugged Washington off for a good long time now because what, eight, nine straight games now of a victory inside of ten points. They've it's wild. Nobody's been done separating. that. Yeah. Yeah. They've not been separating, but they've still been winning. And so that counts for something. And we probably shouldn't shrug them off. They're yep. going to come into this game against Texas as a dog. So for whatever that's worth, you know, commit that to memory. Um, putting Georgia against Florida wraps this thing up nicely. Once they get stomped by Georgia, the argument that they'd be a top 10 team would be in question. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Gerard or Gerardo, Gerardo, excuse me. 
what's the case for Texas not getting a spot as a neutral party? They seemed the most probable out of all the teams to get the spot. They they won their conference. They had probably one of the best three most one of the best three non conference wins of the year. Let's go over to Roy. I want to I want to yeah. bring this up because I got this tweet sent to us from uh, Loyal Verballer Drew earlier today. Um, Roy mentions that nobody has discussed Michigan and the cheating scandal. He says we've got cheaters as the number one seed. So look, here's the deal. Yeah. Um, the Big Ten cut a deal with Michigan in that they would drop their investigation. They would um, do so if Jim Harbaugh and Michigan accepted that three-game suspension. Both sides went with it. And, and the NCAA I, is active still. The NCAA yeah. is still active. They're still looking into it. I'm fully expecting that they're going to lower the boom on Michigan. I don't think this is going to be pretty when all is said and done. But that investigation is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. We don't know the results of it yet. Um, even though we're supposed to presume innocence, it seems like there's a lot of damning evidence that's out in the public sphere now. We, we know that something shady went on there, that they broke rules. Yeah. I understand why people would call Michigan cheaters at this point. Yeah, It was unprecedented on some level for the Big Ten to swoop in in the manner that they did and levy that punishment. They were between a rock and a hard place because there was huge public outcry based on public reporting, not necessarily stuff that came out um, from any official channels. Um, they felt like they had to do something. I think they kind of threaded that needle as best they could. But there's not really much precedent for keeping Michigan out or holding Michigan accountable in season for an ongoing investigation that we don't know the results of yet. Right. The NCAA has expedited that investigation. My hunch is it's not going to be one of those deals that takes two years to figure it out. We're going to know this offseason where things stand at Michigan. I think so. And so I've said this all along. Michigan fans should be grateful that they're in this situation at this point in time. They should root like hell to win the national championship. Michigan may not be eligible to be in the playoff next season. I get it from the standpoint of uh, why would you want to put cheaters number one? I don't think you want to put cheaters number one. I also think Michigan is due a fair process. I think Michigan is, is um, you know, Michigan just needs to keep doing its thing and, and wait for what the NCAA finds. I agree. That's, so I, at this point in time, we kind of are where we are. If you want to call them cheaters, I think you're well within your right to do so. But I don't know if we can really do much beyond um, carry on and let the NCAA process work its work its way through this and and come to a conclusion at some point, probably in the off season. Yeah. Also, if you want to start deeply investigating previous playoff teams, and even if it's something that you don't think is a big deal, but that a line was crossed in terms of the rules, you might dig up some stuff that could affect some previous championships as well. Yeah. Uh, Kendall, by the way, chimed back in here. He says, "I only yes. used that 2011 Alabama team." That was without a doubt. And then Oklahoma State, Stanford, we had the scenario in which Boise was a top four for a while. Saban might have ruined the sport. I, yeah. I think it's entirely possible that Saban saved and ruined the sport all at the same time. Yeah. You get that uh, villain. You get some incredible offenses, some incredible entertainment. But at the same time, his run of success has been unmatched. Bama's lost week two against another playoff team. You guys have a hate IQ of... I think he meant of. We can yeah. talk about IQs on that one. Of. You got to nail the spelling of of. It's if you're really going to nail word, guy, it's only a two letter word. O F, right there. Hate IQ. I I said Bama should be in. I don't know. Did you join late? Maybe you should go back and use the DVR function here. Right. What else we got here? Keith, it's going to be the JV teams in the Orange Bowl. Meaningless. That sucks. That does suck. Yeah, that's the and result. It sucks. it sucks even more for Florida State because they're going to go into that game with Tate Rodemaker against a Georgia defense, and they're probably going to lose. And then all of this spilled milk that we are dealing with right now over them mm -hmm. not getting into the playoff. Um, unfortunately, there's going to be a, a whole host of fan bases that try to dunk on Florida State, which I don't think is fair either. No. Here we go. Who do you think will win, and who do you think a 12-team bracket um, would have maybe in a different outcome. So I have not seen, I'm sure if, if somebody's found it yet out on the Twitter sphere, I'm sure by now one of the big publications has put forward. So I have they, the top 12 here. So you have you to do. take out number 12 and put in right now. It looks like the, the highest ranked team is Liberty. If I'm reading this correctly. Okay. No, excuse me. SMU is one ahead of Liberty. Okay. So SMU, who do we got? Give me, give me the uh, number 12 uh, is Oklahoma. 
Number 12 is Oklahoma. Okay, so hold on. I'll see if I can do this on the fly. Let's number, do it on the fly. Number five we know is Florida State. And number six we know is Georgia. What do we got the rest of the way, Dan? You said 12 is SMU. Oh, sorry, I haven't seen the updated one. Okay. Sorry, I was looking at the AP poll. My apologies. If you um, see anything further, let us know in the chat. Uh, they're also working on New Year's Six Bowl games. If any of that stuff comes out, we'll we'll do our best. To yeah, right now, here. so Oklahoma is 12 in the AP. We're going off of the one that doesn't count. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's Michigan, Washington, Texas. Florida State does finish the year at number four in the AP. Alabama, number five. Okay. Yeah, if we get the top 12, we can put together one of those makeshift brackets. I do think this is a very interesting conversation because – um, and we talked about this earlier in the stream, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to come to a situation now where uh, what the, the conversation we are having now shifts to do we agree with the seating? Right. Next season, do we agree with the seating? Do we agree with um, teams being left out of um, le left out of a situation where they could host a home game? Right. Should they be hosting a home game? Do they deserve to host a home game next season? Because again first round games can be played on campus. It's going to be the wildest year of college football next season because of this new setup and people not know how it works and all, you know, whatever skeletons we find with the new system that maybe still has some kinks in it. But next season we're talking about top 12 and not top four. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? Let's see here. Um, what else do we got? Emily chiming in Ha Georgia. Okay, great. Don't know the context. Not sure what it means. Great with it. What else we got here? Stuart just found the show today and your podcast and overcast. I'll be listening Boom. to the show, boy. Thank you, Stuart. Appreciate Shout out that. Stuart. Be a Stuart. Go to solidverbal.com slash listen. Or if you just go down to the links at the bottom, uh, that'll take you over to your podcasting app of choice. That's why we do this. Got all sorts of content coming your way here. Uh, what do we got here? Emily says she loves Alabama. We got that, Emily. Thank you. Okay. Andrew, how many former ESPN commentators were Alabama grads? How many were in the SEC? I don't think it's a vast conspiracy, but groupthink is a thing. Yes. Yes, we talked about that, right? We Herb Street was hammering. Herb Street was hammering Alabama as worthy of being top four and has been for a while. Like, I think he went on a podcast and just, like, just put in the effing best four teams, and that's Alabama. And I'm sorry for Florida State, but that's Alabama. I mean, yeah. that, it, it has been, like, it has been in motion for a few days. That, you know, if Alabama beats Georgia, you have to put Alabama in. Yep. Uh, here we go. Joey Galloway isn't an SEC guy. He was saying the same thing. He was, but I think he was doing it more artfully. And Booger McFarland was, is an SEC guy as well, right? Played at LSU. Correct. Absolutely wanted Florida State in. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, here's the deal, Dan. Um, yeah. For those who have tuned in the full way through, we appreciate um, you stopping by here, giving us your input. It's always fun to put comments up there. Um, please do hit subscribe or follow to the podcast of the channel, first and foremost, as well as the podcast. We are going to be putting out a full reaction to the playoff and also talk through the New Year's Six and some of the bowl matchups on the episode that hits the public feed on Tuesday morning. We need to give ourselves a chance to go through all this stuff, frankly. Of course. A ton of matchups, 40 bowl matchups are going to be hitting the wire here before the end of the day. Um, also, the college football transfer portal opens on Monday morning. The Tuesday episode is going to be, as the kids say, lit. Uh, we are going to have <laughs> bet, all, Ty, all, bet. Sorts, all sorts of playoff and bowl reactions as well as complete coverage of the college football transfer portal because that's going to be crazy. It seems like that's the second season now that we need to discuss. So we'll talk about that. Last but certainly not least, get in our bowl pool. Like if you're listening to yes. this now, you can get in on our bowl pool. It's free. You go to playwinterwonders.com. That'll get you over to the bowl pool. Um, if you have any trouble getting into that bowl pool, just leave a comment if you want to be part of it, or you can email us at solidverbal at gmail.com. We'll make sure you get the link to get in. All are welcome. It's free to play. We're going to give out prizes to the top 10, and then plus on top of that, a grand prize to whoever finishes first. So we've never done this before. We've never had that many prizes to give away as part of this, but it's a bowl confidence pool. It's fun. Dan and I are going to deliver a primer on your public podcast feed a little later this week, help you pick that confidence pool, give you some strategy for picking that confidence pool, 
It's one of the fun things we get to do. At and the you end can of the year, trust so. me. I picked Oregon over Washington twice, not once, but twice people, twice people. We call it winter wonders. Yes. You can be a winter wonder by picking and finishing in that top 11. That is all Correct. I have for now. Um, it has been an eventful 48 hours to say the least in the world of college football. And we appreciate our footballers so very much. Thank you to everybody who has been tuning in to all of these streams that we've done. Gosh, it's been what three live streams now over the last yeah. 24 hours or so. Uh, we got to get some sleep. We got to rest the voice box because we got to do this again tomorrow night. So for that guy over there, my good friend, Dan Rubenstein for myself, Ty Hildenbrand for the thousands upon thousands of our ballers watching at home. Thank you again for your support. Make sure you hit the links. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and as always stay solid. Peace.